click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a last numerical that is problem number 6 which is based on properties of the transform. Now in this question I have placed two different values and it is available on different sides of n. So what is the question? Let's see first of all. A problem number six, a last question. Determine the Z transform and sketch the ROC of X of N and the sequence is given one upon three or you can say one by three rest to N and it is available when N is greater than or equals to zero which is this will give us a right handed sided ROC. Now on next part we have one by two or half rest to N and this value is available when N is less than zero. That is from minus infinity to minus 1 we have this value and from 0 to infinity we have this value and we have to obtain a Z transform first and then we'll go on to ROC. Now look at here basically X of N is available on right hand side also as well as left hand side also which means the ROC will be a two sided. So first of all this look at here X of N it is available from n equals to 0 to infinity and having a value one third or 1 by 3 raised to n and the next part is available on left hand side that is n is less than 0 and the value is half raised to n so first of all we will apply z transform or we will use the definition of z transform so our function is summation value varies from n equals to minus infinity, infinity x of n z to the power minus n here we have place value from minus infinity, infinity basically it is a definition of z transform you can use if you if the question is either one sided then you can use a unilateral property but right now the question is bilateral so that's why i have used or have chosen a bilateral definition of z transform now what is important basically this x of n is available on both the side that is on negative side also as well as on positive side also so our summation value will be also changes into two parts or split it into two parts first one for left hand side and the second one is for right hand side so i'm going to calculate x of z in two parts first limit is for left hand side here the limit is mentioned n is less than 0 which means our n value will start from left most value that is minus infinity to minus 1 because here not mentioned n is equals to 0 it is mentioned n is less than 0 and which is the uh, <coughs> and which is the nearest value of 0 in the left side on the left side we have minus 1 and the extreme value is minus infinity and in this region our function is gives us half rest to n value into z rest to minus n now what is the second part here it is mentioned your n value started from 0 that is n is equals to 0 and n is greater than 0 which means our summation value starts from 0 to infinity so what we have the summation value varies from 0 to infinity because here n is equal to 0 and n is greater than 0 is also mentioned and in this region we have the value of x of n that is 1 by 3 raised to n and that will multiply z to the power n now look at here we have the formula for n equals to 0 to infinity a raised to n but we don't have any formula for n value which varies from my negative part you can say directly or for the values minus infinity minus 1 we have the value or we have the formula for 0 to infinity summation value but we don't have any formula for minus infinity to minus 1 but there is one formula for this calculation and that is summation value varies from 1 to infinity a raised to n and the formula was a upon 1 minus a so what is important we can change this limit value if we replace this n by minus n or you can say we will use the time reversal property over here now replacing n equals to minus n in first summation so my x of z was the first summation value where the summation is depends on n but that n is replaced by minus m so that's why i'm going to write here minus m varies from minus infinity to minus 1 now we have half rest to we have n that n is replaced by minus m 
and then we have z to the power minus n but that n is replaced by minus m and the next part will remain as it is now look at here if we multiply this summation value by minus sign on both these sides look at here here the minus m varies from minus infinity to minus one then we can say that if I take this minus sign or if we shift this minus sign on left hand side or you can say a right hand side you can shift this minus sign on right hand side or else this right hand side or minus sign on left hand side or else you can say that just multiply both the sides by minus sign then you can say that this minus m will be plus m but these limits will be changed because the lower limit is placed on lower side and higher limit is placed on higher side if you multiply minus sign on both the side then this minus one will be replaced by plus one and this minus infinity is replaced by plus infinity so this plus infinity becomes higher limit whereas this plus one will be now lower limit because I have multiplied both the sides by minus sign. Now, we have half raised to m minus m. Now, you can take this minus sign inside this bracket. Look at here, we can write 1 by 2 as a 2 to the power minus 1. And if I take this minus sign inside, then that minus power 1 and minus power 1 will give us a plus power 1. So, we have a 2 raised to m and then here also what we have if this n is replaced by minus m so here we have minus m minus minus will become plus so we have z to the power m plus rest of the side will remain as it is now what which type of formula we have studied we have studied two formulas basically i'm going to write both this one these are the two formula that we have studied so here the summation value varies from 0 to infinity so this is the formula or this is the term which will be treated as or like similar to this one and here we have a summation value varies from 1 to infinity so we can treat this whole summation like this so i'm going to consider 2 into z as a, a and 1 by 3 into z inverse will be my a for this formula Uh, editor please edit that video because last page was I have done some mistake on last page just consider this as a new one now now the summation value here m varies from 1 to infinity and if I compare both the formula with this one then you can say that this is will be my a now similarly just compare summation value of n equals 0 to infinity with the last formula and we can say that my a value is 3 inverse and z inverse now i'm going to supply <coughs> now i'm going to apply both the formulas over here so my x of z value becomes for this our formula was a upon 1 minus a so my a is 2z similarly here the formula was 1 upon 1 minus a now look at here here we have z but here we have z inverse so for right hand side part we can multiply numerator and denominator by z but for left hand side i am going to take minus sign common so that this two will be comes first now if i multiply both the sides by z then if we multiply numerator and denominator by z then this will be having numerator z and we have z to the power 3 inverse a 3 inverse can be written as 1 by 3 now if you want then you can take this 3 common also so this is nothing but the z transform of given function so basically what we want we want to calculate the roc so for that i will prefer this formula or this as a result look at it in both the cases what we have this result is obtained when our 
n value is less than 0. Now we are going to find out the ROC of both this function or both this part. First of all, just do one thing. Take these two common. If I take these two common, then what will happen? The first part, in the first part, you will get this. In second part, just multiply z on numerator and denominator side. And this 3 inverse can be written as 1 by 3. Now, what is the next step? To find out the ROC, what I'm going to do, I'm going to equate denominator with the 0, like similar to finding the ROC. Now, to finding the ROC, what we are going to do? Uh, just substitute this value for ROC and that formula was mod z is greater than 0. So, this z is nothing but the factors or the poles of that part. So, in for first part, what we have? Now, if we shift this z on the right hand side, then our mod z is less than half. This will be the ROC of first part because the in this function, in question part, this function is having a region which is less than 0. Now, move on to this. Now, this is z is replaced by z minus 1 by 3. Now, shift this 1 by 3 on right hand side. What you will get? This will be nothing but mod z is greater than 1 by 3, which means where this ROC will lie or what is the location of the ROC of this question. So, just go through these two values and just write down the region. How to write? Look at here. Here the one third is less than mod z but half is greater than mod z. So half value is greater than mod z that's why it is written on right hand side but one third is less than mod z that's why it is mentioned on left hand side. So this is nothing but the ROC of given function. So we will plot right now the ROC part. So, this was our function and this was the ROC of that function. What you can say that the ROC is available and it is greater than 1 by 3 and lesser than half which means this is the value of 1 by 3 or this is the radius circle of 1 by 3 and next circle is for half radius and your ROC is existing between perfectly in between 1 by 3 and 1 by 2. So, Here, the ROC of given function will lie. So, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda for further videos. Thank you so much.